another director. Ah, but there's Emiliana, look! Perhaps she'll know where we can find it. Yes, let's go and ask her. And we can find out how our profile is going at the same time. And I like talking to him. It's your time to shine. Still here, pretending to do real detective work? If I were that good at pretending, I could pretend to like you. So, how are you getting on? Okay! Emiliana, I finally got her name right. Just a sign. You're being kind of harsh. I get it, she's doing tech and what is considered police work as well. But private eyes also do all the stuff that police normally don't do. So they are needed. So, yeah, she's a detective. Don't be so catty. No doubt you've hit a brick wall, so we can see if you can glean this anything from me. Not at all! I was just curious to know how your profile was going. Farah, I'll tell you. Perha perhaps hearing some ge genuine deduction will make you realize how unsophisticated your efforts are. A taste of cut cutting edge profile work could do wonders to your future investigations. Well, we can dream, can't we? You know, this lady always makes me want to scratch. Be quiet, hon. Don't interrupt me with your meanless yapping. Yeah, bow wow, as in bow wow, you're annoying. So, having spoken to everyone involved, I've built a detailed profile of the case. The only person who wasn't happy about the final kissing was the editor. Editore. I don't know why I speak that with an accent. Another one, he's the only one with a motive. He had complained to the director that the stolen scene wasn't appropriate for the film. However, Tore has an alibi. On the other hand, Seymour frames alone in the projection box, box had the opportunity to commit the crime, but there is no clear motive. Frames is crazy about his machines, but has little or no interest in the films he, sh he shows using them. Therefore, he had no reason to commit the crime. The logical conclusion of all this is that the real culprit is someone else, someone we have yet to investigate. But who could that be? The only other person with access to the film's rules who has not been investigated thoroughly until now is Director Marek D. Rector. Rector? But, but why? Rector is a renowned perfectionist. His attention to detail is well known. How meticulous he is about such minutiae... I have no idea what that word means. ...as the shape of clouds in the sky or the sound of waves. And will appear to the final kiss scene in his latest film, obviously had been troubling him for some time. The perfection in him just couldn't decide if the scene was up to scratch. He was worthy of including his magnum opus. He agonized over the strider up until the premiere screen today, when finally he made up his mind. The scene had to go. Okay, that's cute and all, but that's literally all speculation. We have literally no proof of that. With no time to lose, he cut the scene from the reel and either did it or hit it or disposed of it, all for the sake of the perfect film. This is the outcome of my analysis of all the available evidence. Mm, very interesting. It's certainly a plausible theory, Emiliano. Oh, I wouldn't expect you to accept so graciously. But something about it just doesn't sit right with me. What? You have a problem with my profiling? It's not exactly a problem, no. It's just something I can't quite put my finger on. His latest detection go beyond what you can reason to see, you know? They have a magic all of their own. <sighs> magic has no place in case solving units. Catrell is working on a bunch, on a hunch, nothing more. And hunches are unreliable. Aren't you technically also working on what is considered a hunch? Yes, it's a very well educated hunch, but with sound, sound theory. But it's still just a hunch. You literally have no proof, no evidence. Well, anyway, I think we should have another chat with Mr. Rector. He was so upset before to give us any useful information. Well, that is certainly true. The more information we can gather, the better. Ah, uh, and talk about the devil. That's him over there, isn't it? Yes, and even Mr. Torre, it seems. Mm. It looks like something's going on between the two of them. Eddie, there you are. Have you got a minute? Sure. Aki, there's something I need to talk to you about, too. 
but not here. Can we go somewhere a little more private? How about in the auditorium? It's probably empty now. We should have the place to ourselves. Suits me fine. Did you see that, Miss Layton? They disappeared to the auditorium together. Yes, it's an interesting development. We must sneak in there as well. Oh dear, you keep playing your private eye games, Katria. Some, some of us still have real work to do. Man, the clues are flying this one, Jesus! That's strange. We also saw them come in here. Where have they disappeared to? Sniff if, um, over there, cat. How the hell did we not see them? Oh, we cannot explore this place. Yeah, yeah, first things first. I figured. Oh, did I not heard a magnifying glass sound? What is there? Nothing else here. Just coins. I guess that makes sense. But first, I'm saving. Hold on a second, guys. Aren't you glad I tend to cut now this the, the fact that I'm saving? Unless we end the... Uh... Okay, so that... Oh, wait, wait. That case I just uh, keep them going. You discovered a hip hunting hat. What the heck's a hip hunting? What? I'm a little bit curious. That's a, is that actually uh, the name of that hat? Alright then, Eddie. Why don't you just admit it? You're the one who cut the scene, aren't you? You never liked it. You had a problem with me on the first day of shooting. Yeah, and you knew that, but you refused to cut it yourself, you stubborn old fool. Who's the director here, eh? Me, I am. If I say a scene stays in, it stays in. Or did I misunderstand the meaning of director somewhere? If you got a problem with me, with the way I make decisions, then this partnership of ours is over, as of now. It's over, you say, oh, Maverick, you've done it now. Please, let's all come down and try to talk about this rational. Oh, where did you spring off from, Miss Layton? Never mind that now. Just take some deep breath and calm yourselves down. Breathe in and out. And out some more. A little bit more. That's it. Keep. Uh, uh. I was trying to kill you. <laughs> yeah, you need to breathe in sometimes, Jesus. Of course not. I'm detective. I might prefer investigating murders to commit to committing them. Anyway, it's clear that you have some unresolved issues. Oh, you overheard that, didn't you? We're just letting off steam out of the film, that's all. It seems like a little more than that. The end of a partnership together? This no it all thinks is good is God's gift to Romans films these days, but his love scenes have always been a total disaster. It's only my head and they saved them all these years. Thanks to me and my per and he's produced so many hits. I can't mind you, he's not technically wrong, because there's a lot more than just directing a film to make it work. There's the actors, the script, the lighting, the, the effects. And yes, even the editing can make an entire film completely different. But that does that mean anything to him now? Not a jot. Well, he might have chosen to forget, but mark my words, I haven't. I mean... What about this love scene, hmm? Where did that come from? The perplexed partner. A romantic Romeo has come to take his sweetheart to a delightful dinner. To add a little excitement, Sal telling him her room number directly, he playfully his playful partner took photographs of every junction along the route. To the room and send them into him. The photos aren't in any particular order, but by studying them carefully, you should be able to work out which of, the, of rooms A to E is the correct one. 
in puzzles where there are two different images to consult, one at the bottom left and the big one at the right, you can toggle between them using your arm. Yarnton in particular, okay, so he's here. One million zillion jillion dillion cotillion times later. But no, let's rethink this. So I know this one here is the first one. Hmm. Then maybe this one here is the next one? Instead of this one? And maybe... Oh, maybe this one is this. The corner could be this part here. I'm gonna go down. I think it's deep, but honestly I'm confused. Do it, I think. Oh, I got it right. Nice. Any puzzle solved. I got it right. Nice. You did it. Like you found the room on time. Otherwise, a couple of dinner days would have been ruined. Yeah, I get it. It's been playful, but not the best, honestly. Well, I I didn't think you solved that one. They had me stuck for decades. There is no puzzle I can be solved with, with some calm and considering th considered thinking. Mr. Tori, if you calm down a bit now, perhaps... Calm down? Are you being funny? Ah, I don't care about that spat with Maverick before, but I can't be pinned for this theft or the final scene. I mean, it's a matter of pride. What sort of editor would do something like that? I say, miss, I don't think this fight is going to sort itself out anytime soon. Oh well, never mind. It's rather fun to watch, shall we? Great idea, Cat. Let's just forget about the case and what the two prime suspects are you instead. Don't be snide, Shrill. If you listen in, they might let something really get flip that gives us a lead. Sneaky Cat. You're one sneaky cat, Cat. Pride? Pride? That's more important to you than honoring the decisions made by the director? Cutting scenes you were never asked to cut? For the last time, I did not steal that kissing, and you know that I would never cut a film unless you gave me the go-ahead. Hmm, but it's no secret you didn't like the scene. You all had a problem with it. Come on, I admit it. Yeah, I had a problem excited that a great Maverick director could be happy to end uh, one of his greatest films with such a scene like that. Disc. Why don't you admit it? You never really got on with that scene either, did you? Yes, I did. I, I was perfectly, perfectly happy with it. So are willing to compromise on quality these days, are you? You make me sick, Maverick. But you know what makes me more sick? The fact that someone older than me cut one of your films. Alright then, Eddie. If it wasn't you, then who was it? Tell me that. If you ask me, it was you. Listen to your conscience before I got corrupted by fame. How dare you! Back in the old days, you wouldn't have stopped shooting until you got a scene you were 100% happy with. But now, well, those days are gone. Yes, the days when my films made no money. Look, if I've changed my directing style, it's for you and the rest of the crew. And we're grateful for that. We all appreciate getting paid, don't get me wrong. But does that mean we have to make such a compromise to the production? Doesn't mean you can't be true to yourself anymore. Look, I know I said your love scenes were rubbish, but the truth is you haven't shot some good stuff in the past. Then you have some shot some good stuff in the past, haven't you? Maybe, but that was a long time ago now. Anyway, Eddie, being too idealistic doesn't pay the bills, does it? That's the bottom line. Fine. If that's your take on it, there's nothing more to say. Goodbye, Maverick. Yikes, that didn't end well, did it? Mr. Torres walked out. 
This could be our chance to get some important information out of Mr. Rector. Come on, Ernest. And you, Cheryl. Mr. Rector, I'd like to ask you a few more questions if you don't mind. Eh, I'm really on the mood at the moment, but alright. If you'd help me get this whole thing cleared up quickly. That was a rather heated argument you and your Mr. And Mr. Turner said. Are such disagreements between the two of you of a regular occurrence? Eddie and I have been a team for a very long time. Since long before I made it. So we've had more than a few fights over the years. Back in the early days, we used to have blazing rows about production issues. Still, we've never gone this far before. We've never talked about going our separate ways. Yes, well, one ill word as as they say. But wait, weren't you the one who said that we were going to go a separate race? If you said things you didn't mean, I'm sure an apology will go a long way to fixing things. Mm -hmm. With Eddie, I'm not so sure. I heard, that, I heard that, he, that he used to make films that were a lot less mainstream, with more fringe appeal. Is that right? <laughs> That's going back a bit now. Anyway, it wasn't like I was trying to shoot fringe films. That's just how it worked out. That's how people took my material. It wasn't for everyone. And again, that's very fair. Not everyone's gonna like everything you do. There are gonna be people who like and people who don't. And again, I get where he's coming from. Nowadays, even if you have passion for something, if it's not going well, I'm sorry to say you just can't keep going. Because you need money. He can't still keep doing his moves the way he likes, but as a like a secondary thing, like a way to pass time, not a fast way to pass time, but as a, a second job, so to speak, that he could put with his own money. It wouldn't probably be as big budget, but still would be interesting. But Eddie really liked my old work, and now that I'm making films more people actually want to watch, he's not happy about it. You know, he was always pressing me not to in include the last scene in no sub for love, right from the start. Yes, he told me. He said he didn't believe it was true to your style. <laughs> Not true to my style, huh? That makes it all, it all sound so simple. The truth is, I don't even know what my style is anymore. It's just, it's just a typical of any though. Never had any hesitation in telling me what was wrong with my films. Sometimes, he makes me so mad, but I have to admit it, he's usually right. Oh, who am I kidding? He was right this time too. You mean about the stone scene? Ah, I just wanted it to be real. I wanted to shoot, to shoot a kiss that looked like it was genuine from the heart. Not just two actors playing their parts. But somehow, I couldn't get it right. In the old days, I wouldn't have given up. I have to just keep shooting and shooting until I got the result I want. Why didn't you do it at this time then? You're young. I wouldn't expect you to understand. The fact is, as you get older, you lose the drive you had in your youth. No, you're quite right. That's not something I can relate to. It sounds rather sad, to be honest. So you're telling us that Mr. Tori couldn't accept the scene you shot. Then he cut it from the film without your permission. Yeah, that's his job after all, cutting film, and he's very good at it. I can't really say I blame him, this is all my fault. This... This might seem like a strange request after everything that's happened with Lathan, but... Could you try to keep this quiet? Eddie did it for my benefit at the end of the day. I'm afraid that won't be possible. What? But if this comes out, Eddie's career is over! Is it really worth destroying that man just for some... Is so this an obligation to uphold justice? That's not the reason at all. It's because Mr. Tori didn't do it. You see, the fact is, you are his alibi, Mr. Wright. Exactly. You and Mr. Tori were together at all times until we started screening, you, weren't you? And when you checked over the film rooms together, you found no problems. So if Mr. Tori has, was never out of your sight at that time, then however much he disagreed with, with the inclusion of the scene, he had no opportunity to cut it. I suppose that's true. So someone else stole it then? Well, that's wonderful. Miss Layton? Oh, sorry. Good, good. Looks like I have all the evidence I need now. Wait, so it was Mr. Torre? Mr. Torno. 
Mr. Maverick e fala com o filme Just Before Screen. Olha essa daqui, esse que eu vi such Yokai Watch vibes. Which makes sense, these, these, both of these games are made by level 5, so it makes sense. Yeah, let's solve it. Of course, yes, it all makes sense now. Yeah, and I'm deaf now. That's my right down my, that was right down my ear, cat. Miss Slayton, have you solved it? Oh, yeah, she screamed. And apparently I'm nervous, you, um, shows here too. Yes, Ernest, I believe I have. Just as every film has a final scene, every case has a truth to, uh, to glean. Okay, so she's gonna try doing the right thing all the time. Now, I have uncovered both. Oh, well done, Miss Layton. Brava! And what a spiffing verse that was. Ernest, some of the suspects. Gladly, Miss, gladly. Thank you all for coming, everyone. I have finally ascertained the truth about the stolen kiss scene. Really? You have? Who did it? Come on, spill the beans. I want to know who did this to me and why. And how? That's what I want to know. When, I, when was it cut out of the reel? Tell us, Mrs. Detective. Put us all out of our misery, please. Momento, Catriel. Why have you asked so many people here? It's clearly obvious that most of them couldn't possibly have been involved. Oh, it's much more fun this way. The more people, the more tension. <laughs> I agree with Leighton. He's a born performer, that woman. Oh, this is so exciting. I couldn't miss a show like this. I, I mean, him as mayor. I have vested interest in the truth. You know, you can't just let your accent that, say that this is exciting, because it kind of is. As the head of the Seven Dragons, I feel obliged to see this case through to its conclusion. Don't need me, don't need me, mind your role, mind your role. And I really don't care what happened to that scene. Can't I just go? Come along, Miss Layton. We're all dying to hear the truth about this case. And you know who the culprit is. Let's not rush. This is a detective's moment of glory, after all. True. If it were a film, I'd have a, I'd have a good suspense track running in the background and real draw to the build of the tension. Exactly. Now, let's get to the case. This was an extremely strange affair from the outset. A final scene stolen from a film on the verity of his abuse screen. So what could be the truth behind it? No doubt you all have your own theories and ideas. But I'm not exaggerating when I tell you all that the real truth will make even the most outlandish theory of yours in time. Because you see, the truth is always stranger than fiction. Again, it's only sometimes, but okay. Okay, cat. Is this just a shaggy dog story, or do you actually know who did it? All right, all right. You can let me milk it. Good. If I had to identify one culprit in this case, <gasps> it would be you over there. Yes. I knew it. Ah! No, didn't do it. Didn't do it. I mean, minor. I mean, major minor. I freaking knew it! And I think I know what happened. Popcorn fell in, and you kind of accidentally ripped it, right? Wrong. When the reels were being switched during the screening, you did a major minor poo on the film. A poo? And his poo hit the all-important kiss scene. <laughs> Is that it? But surely a little bit of bird poo could easily be wiped off the film. Would everyone please stop saying poo? <laughs> Indeed it could, Mayor Loanida. Which is where the second guilty party in this escapade comes in. You, Mr. Seymour Frames. <gasps> oh! All the equipment here has just recently been upgraded. Mr. Frames cares for his projection machinery so deeply, he couldn't bear the thought of running a soiled film through it, even if the excrement had been wiped off. 
so he cut the infected scene out of the reel altogether. So it's his doing then? Yes, but with the Major resolutely denying everything, it's going to be hard to make it stick. Oh, Pooh. Weren't you the one to say, to, to say stop saying Pooh? Actually, there is a way to make him talk. Popcorn. scene come from? Apparently, Mr. Rector. He cut in an old scene of his own to replace the missing one. It's a clip of himself kissing his lover, shot a long time ago when he was still just starting out as a cameraman. Foxy. Secretly, it was supposed to be a film about his own love affair, so the clothes and everything match the style of the other scenes perfectly. That's how he integrated it so seamlessly. You've got to hand it to the old dog. It's a very moving scene. Yes, because it's full of genuine emotion. They weren't acting. It was true love. <sighs> if only someone would give me a kiss like that. Just imagine. What? Oi, pinstripes. What are you imagining? N nothing. I, I was just... Just what? Um... Spit it out. No, uh, I... What, you <laughs> dirty mongrel? Okay, so the really catch your evil. <laughs> she did that on purpose to get him all flustered. Because, yeah, she knows he has a crush on her, but meh. Yeah. In Naval Advance, no sub for love. Was a hit at the box office with his passion final kissing. I'm gonna be honest with you, I had to hold my laugh. It was such a bad cut. <laughs> I gotta get it, but still, it was so hilariously bad. Now Maverick Director is currently working on a new, albeit not, not too mainstream blockbuster. How is it? You always stumble on the answer in these cases. Stumble on? It sounds like you think it's just luck, Sherl. Well, isn't it? Not at all. The truth is, Miss Layton makes logical but instinctive inferences. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree with him because it seems way to look. Again, it's a game, so of course it's gonna get the right answer every single time, but still. <laughs> <laughs> 